to record it to Zoom and then I download it to my computer and then upload it to YouTube. So at this point, I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about Ed and then take it away in a minute here. So Ed is a video, Ed Traxel is a video coach and online marketing consultant. He teaches busy professionals how to drive more business by using video without the complicated tech or overwhelm of traditional video production work. I like that part. Ed actually used to work at Apple. So he brings a unique skill set from his experiences with sales, marketing, strategizing systems and processes, and really stresses the importance of video and simplifying today's technology, as he was just saying, so you can stand out in the industry overall. So you can stand out as an industry expert online. And he also points out that over 80% of all internet traffic these days is video based. So if you're not creating video content on a regular basis, you're already left behind. Oh, no. Um, so here he's going to show us how to use video to build our business, just what kind, where to post, what equipment to use, what to talk about in videos, and some ideas for setting goals around videos. So go for it, Ed, and I'll put, I'll put you on speaker view here. Awesome. Thank you so much yeah. for the intro. Yeah. And I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. You're going to probably see me looking down uh, because I have my other monitor, so just know that. I'm also going to have the chat open, so I'll be checking the chat as well. This can be a lot of work sometimes, so you know, bear with me, uh, but it's one of those things that this is interactive. So whether you're here in the Zoom meeting or watching this somewhere else, if there is a place for you to comment, please be sure to engage and comment as we go along. So today we're going to be talking about building your business with video, and I'm really excited to see all of you here and also to experience what you're doing with your business currently and what you'll be able to do with it now that you have a little bit more knowledge about video. So as we were talking about in the beginning, over 80% of all internet traffic is video based. This year in 2022, it's estimated 82%. And it's really important that we pay attention to this number because it affects us as business owners, whether you like social media or you like video or you want to be on camera, you don't want to be on camera. It, it's almost the cost of entry to do business online these days. And so we have to start getting more comfortable with it. And, uh, you know, thanks to the pandemic, it has helped push many of us into being on camera through Zoom meetings. So hopefully that's helped you a little bit get more comfortable with showing your face on camera uh, with in a virtual world here. Another reason it's important to use video is that over 97%, and I'm gonna just estimate that by now, 99% of people will go online to search for a business. And they're going to be searching for you before they ever contact you. So understand that people are searching on Google, on social media, they're gonna come across your website or your social profiles. They're gonna browse. And if they're interested, then they're going to reach out to you, whether it's through your contact form or your chat or messages on Instagram or LinkedIn or whatever, that pretty much comes towards the end there. So that's why it's important to have a presence online and add in video. It, it's all part of an ecosystem that we have for doing business online. So things we're going to cover, uh, we're going to be looking at why video for business, uh, what, to, where to post it, what equipment to use, and we're going to talk about what you can talk about on video. And I'm going to help you set some goals for your, your video journey here. I, I call it a journey because it, it, every little step we take is taking us one step closer to creating our video content consistently and sharing it consistently online. So real quick, just about me, you already heard a little intro. Uh, I've been a business over owner, small business owner for over seven years. I've done online marketing for over 10 years now, and I'm a techie with a personality, so I like to cut loose and be able to have regular conversations. I don't speak in code or complicated uh, verbiage. If you say I can't get the thingy to work, I figure out what the thingy is. So 
that's the, the beauty of how my brain works and how I operate. Uh, and I love learning and being able to share what I learn with you, the audience, and be able to take at least one thing and run with it. So you're going to learn a lot here, and it's probably going to be overwhelming, and you're going to probably try to absorb as much as possible, but I want you to just keep in mind, you only need to have one thing that you're going to walk away with today and run with. That one thing might have already happened, just knowing the statistic and reminding yourself the importance of video. That one thing could be something else, which we're going to get into here. So go ahead in the comments down below, just let us know who you are, what you do, and why you are here. It's really important that last part. Why are you here? You could be anywhere else watching anything else, and you're not. You're here. And I, I mean, maybe it's the hair. I know the hair gets a lot of attention, so maybe you like my hair. Uh, but chances are you're probably not here for the hair or my good looks. You're, you're here for something else. And so that's what we want to focus on. So go ahead and pop that into the comments down below. We'll give you a minute there to, to do that. While you're doing that, I will say that I always recommend having water nearby. So this is a tip when you're on video, especially doing a live presentation, whether it's on Zoom or Facebook Live, Instagram Live, TikTok Live, YouTube Live, LinkedIn Live, if I didn't say that, um, you always want to have water nearby, but hold the ice. And if you want to know why, you can ask me in the comments, but I'm going to take a sip of water while I browse and see what you guys have written. Excellent. I'm here to be inspired to use more videos in business marketing. Yes. I'm here because I want to amp up my presence on social media using video. You guys are singing to my heart right now. By the way, I, when I first started my business over seven years ago, I was not wanting to be on video. That was far from my goals and, and what I wanted to do with my marketing. I was always the guy behind the camera, but I knew that in order to get noticed, and if I wanted my business to survive online, I needed to get in front of the camera. I had to get comfortable with the uncomfortable. And so I did the work. I trained myself. I worked on researching what was out there. This is when stream, live streaming started with Periscope. And I created my own talk show and had run that five days a week for almost a whole year and had the commitment for it and, and built it out from there. And then over time, that's where my business shifted into becoming the video coach and helping you get organized and being able to work not only with coaches, but consultants and, and speakers and now real estate agents. And it's just been amazing to see the different industries embrace video. Uh, to find out how to build, yep, your company faster. Perfect. Love it. Here to learn about video on Facebook and Instagram. Perfect. Awesome. Keep going with that. And we're going to keep moving forward here. Another question for you. Go ahead and pop in the comments. Mm -hmm. What do you find challenging about video? Whatever it is, pop it down there in the comments. It's really important uh, for a couple of reasons. One, it, it tells me what, what's going on and how you feel about video. And two, it allows you to be truthful to yourself and know what is challenging about video. Is it the time? Is it the creation? Is it the titles? Is it the captions? Is it the equipment? Like whatever it is, pop it down there in the comments and I'll be reading through that as we continue moving forward here. Don't skip this question. I see you, don't, sk don't skip the question because it's important for, e for you. So what is video marketing? Video marketing is you getting on camera, ideally, and showcasing what you have to offer. Now, it's not always gonna be selling like a QVC channel, if anybody's familiar with QVC, where you're selling your product or service, that can be a part of it, but marketing really is either starting or joining a conversation. That's really what it's about. So anything that you do in your marketing efforts really should be starting or joining the conversation. And so when we put video in front of that, we're just, starting or creating a video conversation with our audience. Our audience could be 
zero because we're just starting out. Our audience could be 100,000 because we've been in it for a long time or we just had a amazing success from the start. Whatever it is, our audience is there or will be there and we need to make sure that we are showing up for them. Perfect, I love uh, these comments coming in for that question uh, around what's challenging about video. Some say I'm not intimidated by video, just don't know much at, at all about social media yet, which is great because that's the thing. It's not just about video because you all have, you'll, you'll discover when we talk about it, you all have the equipment that you need to record your videos. And you probably know how to record the videos, but there's a lot that goes into it before during and after. And social media is one of those things which can be very, very challenging, especially because we don't have an instruction manual or better yet, a, someone who can actually walk us through it and guide us to that success with it. Where I'm going to yes. pop in really quick. Sorry to interrupt, Ed. Yeah, yeah. I did have, because of our technology issues we had, we have four people just came in Perfect. to the waiting room. So what I'm going to do is have them introduce themselves at the end mm -hmm. after your presentation is done. And for new people, we have, as I think most of you know, a recording that's being done of as presentation. So you will get access to the part that you missed. Um, within a couple of days, it'll be up on YouTube. So go back into your perfect scheduled program there, Ed. Yes. <laughs> and back to our scheduled program. Yes. So what's the most common types of marketing videos? Really explainer videos. Think about YouTube and how-to videos and how popular those are and, and probably why you're searching for something. Uh, when you're searching for something, you're going to Google or YouTube and you're looking for a video tutorial. So explainer videos. Another one is presentation. So similar to this, uh, where you're presenting something, uh, I like to have mine, as you can tell already, interactive, which is why I'm having you in the comments share answers to the questions I ask you. So that way it's more engaging and we can actually connect and, and learn from each other. Then you have advertisements and then, of course, demos. Demos can be uh, showing off your, your product. Isn't this a nice phone case? If you pull the red tab, you have your cards come out, things like that. So video, I love statistics, especially when they work in your favor. Uh, video is the next best thing to you being in person. And we have to realize that not only is uh, it over 80% video based in terms of search traffic, um, but there's an over 80% conversion rate on videos as well. And so it's really important to have videos. And I'm not talking about just on social media. That is ideal on social. And we'll talk more about that in a second. But I'm also talking about anywhere else you show up online, which means your website, emails, text messages, wherever you're showing up. Like I said, I work with agents and a lot of real estate agents work off of text messaging. So you better believe that video text messages are going to be going out and should be going out. Uh, I love email for a majority of my communication. I'm going to be sending emails with videos or at least links to videos that allow people to engage and interact with it. So anywhere that you're showing up online and you can add video, that's going to be big. So I'm going to catch up on the comment section to read through what you guys have answered already while you answer this next question. What social platforms are you on? Then we're gonna take a look at maybe if it's the right one or not for you. So go ahead and answer that while I quickly check the comments here. My challenge regarding video, I want to project myself as an authority and I'm concerned that people won't take me seriously. Oh, that's a good one. That's a really big one, yep. The best length of video, how often should I post? Yep, that's a very common one. Yes, um, I can show uh, close the sale easily. Yes, that's a good one. Uh, that comment was, I noticed that when I'm uh, on a one-on-one -on -one chat with a prospective client and show them what a professional resume should look like by sharing my screen, I can close the sale easily 95% of the time. Exactly. Imagine showing something like that publicly to somebody who just discovered you, right? And it may be not even the sales part yet, but 
the beauty of video, especially when you put it in places like social media, it works for you even when you're not on camera. That's the beauty of it. it keeps living on. Perfect. So we got people on LinkedIn, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter. Awesome. Uh, perfect. Facebook. Yep. Instagram. There we go. I haven't found a good one yet that doesn't change every day. Yes. <laughs> the, the systems do change quite frequently. So these statistics are a little bit uh, older. I think these came from probably 2020. And so, you know, they're a little bit older, but I haven't found up-to-date ones that are this good. So this is gonna give you a rough idea. But just to show you, I have a couple uh, other platforms on the next slide, but just to show you where you might be hanging out and, and for you to mentally think about, is that really the right place for you? Not to say you can't be there, by all means, be on a, other channels that are relevant to your business because we can't rely on one system. Uh, I will tell you, I thankfully did not rely, and I still don't rely on Instagram for my business operations. However, after seven years of having an account with them and being loyal and, and playing by the rules, they randomly shut down my account back in December. And when I say shut down, I don't mean I just got locked out. I mean, they literally removed my profile, gone. You went to the link. It said this person doesn't exist. Gone. Poof. And I tried everything for two months to try to get that thing back because there was history. Thankfully, I still had that content on Facebook or LinkedIn because it's good to be on multiple channels. But it was still devastating, especially because I knew people had the link. And they would go to it and then see I'm not there and think, oh, I guess that's not in business anymore. And that breaks my heart, right? So that's the importance of being on multiple channels, but knowing which one you're really putting your time and energy into uh, while still diversifying yourself. So this just gives you a quick breakdown. We won't go through everything here, but I just want to show you because a lot of people jump to Instagram because it's the latest, coolest, hottest, youngest, hippest, whatever platform. But you have to remember who's your audience and where are they hanging out? And so if you're not, if you're on Instagram and you're not getting a whole lot of traffic and your demographics probably 45 plus, you have to look at the statistics and you have to think about maybe that's not the platform you should put all your time and energy in, even though it may be easier for you to share your content there. If it if your audience isn't there doesn't matter. Like they're not there. Right. So just keep that in mind. I'm not saying don't be on Instagram, but understand where your people are and think about where you should be spending your time and energy based off of them, not you. Uh, of course, you can always share Instagram to Facebook as well. Just to give you a little uh, uh, show here of YouTube and LinkedIn. Um, and these numbers, again, are probably a little bit more, especially on LinkedIn. I can almost guarantee you probably LinkedIn's numbers are higher now because of the pandemic uh, than they were when this was taken. But just to show you, YouTube pretty much across the board, because again, it's video. Everyone puts their videos there. And so that makes sense to see a wide range of uh, age demographics there. LinkedIn, I guarantee you that the 30 to 65 category, all those numbers are probably increased a lot because there's been a huge transition to from Facebook to LinkedIn. And a lot of people are being more active on LinkedIn, which is why you're seeing uh, all these different updates come through. And it's becoming very, very uh, awesome to see for lack of better terms. <laughs> um, and I don't have the Twitter one on there, I apologize, but um, these are just to give you some numbers there. So what platforms what the platforms want from us. So this is just to give you another understanding. At the end of the day, just know that almost every single platform, at least from the major ones, they want you to have video. That's it. They, there's no question. If you're thinking, should I post this image or should I post this video? Video, whenever you can. Um, doesn't mean everything has to be video, although the platforms would like that. Um, but you know, make sure you start incorporating more video into your marketing efforts. So just to show you right here, Facebook, they really want you to go live 
live streaming video. It's interactive. It's in the moment, just like we're doing right now. Of course, if you're watching this on the replay, it's a replay. Um, YouTube, they want you to upload video, even though they have a live option. Instagram, they have a live option as well, but they want reels. Reels are those short form videos. The reason why is because TikTok. TikTok wants you to have reels, which is Instagram's term. Um, Pinterest is more blog posts. LinkedIn is more articles, but they're starting to do more videos as well too, um, from what I've been seeing and hearing. Well, LinkedIn Live, just to pipe in on that, would be yeah. comparable to Facebook Live. Yes. And it's the only thing though, just to know really quick, you have to qualify for LinkedIn Live. Anybody can just pop in and do a Facebook Live, but you have to have some videos already posted on LinkedIn, like maybe links to your YouTube videos already yeah. on there, on your profile somewhere, post, post with videos attached, just FYI. Yep. But yes, there's, you know, you do see videos on LinkedIn in that way. The yeah. articles, you can put it, a video into an article. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And also for those curious, when it comes to live streaming, your easier platforms to just click and go, if you will, is going to be Facebook and Instagram when you're going live. LinkedIn, you have to have another, a third party program, at least at this time of this recording. Uh, TikTok, you have to have a certain amount of followers. YouTube, I think they changed it so that you can do it on mobile, but you have to have a certain, certain number of something. Uh, you can do it from the desktop though. So if you're thinking, oh, I want to do live video, Instagram and Facebook's where it's going to be for you. I always prefer Facebook. Uh, there's a bigger conversation around that, but if you're choosing between the two, do that. Uh, Clubhouse is live audio. So if you've ever heard of it, it's there. Uh, I'm not sure the how popular it is right now, given other things, but that is another one. So what tech slash equipment do you use? Well, you keep it simple. You got it right in the palm of your hands. Some of you are even watching me on it. Your smartphone. I have an iPhone and I will tell you, the camera on these is amazing. Chances are the camera on your smartphone is amazing. So use it. You have headphones. You might have ear pods, which are the wireless ones. You might have wired ones, which have a little microphone in there. Use it if you need it. The microphone's great. Some people will even hold their microphone like this and it's part of their videos. Like whatever works for you. Um, in fact, I did an interview once uh, at an event where our mic wasn't working. So I had to switch to this and I had to go around and interview people with, with this. It worked. We got great audio and that's all that matters, right? Um, and then you wanna have a good spot to record. So find a place that has uh, limited distractions, hopefully behind you uh, and be able to record. Now, of course, these are just a couple things. There's more to, to it, but these are the equipment that you really need is just your headphones, your smartphone and a decent spot to record. So this came up in one of our comments. What do you talk about? Well, you can find content ideas right in things you've already done. Chances are you've created a blog post. You've created an email that you sent out to people. You are looking at social posts, social media posts. And, and at the end, I'll, I'll mention uh, one that I was just talking about on a live the other day. Um, so we'll circle back to that. But uh, you have probably done an interview, whether you interviewed someone or someone interviewed you. There's great content right there. You're the expert. Remember that. You know what you're talking about. I know one of the comments uh, was, you know, I, I'm worried that no one's going to take me seriously. Listen, remind yourself, you know your topic. As long as you're the expert in that topic, that's all that matters. So you're going to show up knowing your topic, and you're going to have a couple talking points, and you're going to deliver that information. Don't worry about anybody else and what they think. And here's a big tip that I, I want to remind you, whether you're going live or it's pre-recorded and then you upload it later, before you hit that record button, expect nobody to show up. Expect nobody to watch your video. And you might be thinking, why? That 
why would I even then record the video if, if I'm expecting no one to see it? Because it takes the pressure off of you. Think about it. You're stressed. You, you know you got to create this video. You're going to create the video, but you're worried someone's going to see it or, or no one's going to show up and, and that stresses you out or someone makes a comment. So why even bother? Well, why don't we just take that out of the equation, take it off our shoulders, clear our mind and understand I'm recording this video because I'm an expert and I want to talk about this topic. Somebody sees it, great. Nobody sees it, great. I don't care. And then go ahead and record. Now, I say that because what I like to do with my clients is work on the mindset piece. That's the technology. That's the tools that we really have to work on. It's not so much the equipment in terms of what camera and mic and all of that stuff. Yes, that can play a part, but it's really what's going on up here. So that's why I want you to take that little piece there and run with it because it's going to make a huge difference in how you show up with your videos. Uh, one place that you can go that has been popular is Answer the Public. So it's a site where you can type in your uh, idea, your industry, whatever it is that you're looking for to see what people are searching for. You can also do this on Google or YouTube or anywhere else. Uh, but this has been a site that's popular for people to go to and kind of see what people are searching for. But remember, you're the expert. You know your topic. You know what, what people should know about your industry for the most part. You know, you're, you're the one that has all the information up here. Now it's time to start letting that out. So try not to get too distracted by all of the places that you could search because you might end up researching and making notes and having a long list of ideas, but never record your videos. And we don't want that. I love this quote from Gary Vee. The content is going to lead to your opportunities. It's as simple as that. And it is. It really is. We overthink. We want things to be perfect. And especially when we're starting out, we want it to be perfect before we actually release a video. That's not, it's not going to happen. <laughs> especially when you think about we're human. We're not perfect. We're going to have quirks and that's okay. So give yourself permission to be yourself and understand that we want to see you on video, the same that we're going to see you on the street, at the coffee shop, connecting with, because it builds that no like trust factor. All right, so video goals. So here's where you can start setting some goals for yourself. There are different types of goals. You can see this list here. I'll, I'll talk about a couple here, but understand that your goals are going to be different than somebody else's than your competitors, than, than your friend who you might be working on, you know, building you up and helping you with your video uh, journey here. But look at your goals and, and think about what could be a goal for you. For example, record a certain amount of videos per week. If you're just starting out, I'd say one, because that's a lot right there, because we're going for consistency. We're not trying to go for, I, I, I did a 30-day challenge. I have videos every day that I'm pumped out because that can lead to burnout. And then it's like, what was the point? So go slow and steady because it always wins the race. Uh, improving your customer service. So you can offer Q&A videos, which again, at the end, I'll show you a blog post that I just was talking about this where actually uh, an agent was doing that. And it's great content. You can record your live stream videos like we talked about. Maybe you've been recording videos as pre-record. Now you want to start live streaming or vice versa. If you're like me, I started out with live streaming because pre-recorded was too hard. I felt too uncomfortable. So figure out what works for you, write your goal down, and then look at it consistently and start working towards it every day. So your plan. Deciding on your goal, deciding on a network that you want to test it out on, figuring out a time, because let's face it, if you do not put a time and date on that thing, you are never going to get it done. 
It's still going to be sitting on that someday maybe list. You're going to pick a topic. So you have your industry, you're the expert in it. What's one topic that you can talk about? Then you're going to have a, a couple talking points, by the way, with that topic. So that way you can cover yourself. Then you're going to hit record. If you're live streaming, you're going to hit the live go live button. Either way, you're going to put that content out there. And then you're going to repeat the process. Because I guarantee you, the first few times, or the first few hundred times, you're not gonna be 100% happy with it. And that's okay. It's building the habit and being able to get comfortable with the uncomfortable and recording videos. And not only that, but showing your face on camera, which I know is a challenge. Trust me, I know it. I, I felt it, I've been there, done that. Um, some days I, I feel like I'm there as well, but again, it's not about you, it's not about me, it's about our audience and showing up for them and building that no like trust factor, which only can happen when we see you, when we hear you, and when we get to connect with you as if we were in person. All right, by the way, if you need help with it, you just reach out to me, um, but this is a good quote to, to have there. If you want to look good in front of the camera, sorry, I'll back up. I was already on camera. I'll read the full quote. If you want to look good in front of thousands, you have to outwork thousands in front of nobody. Again, don't worry about anybody showing up. You have to show up. If you get nothing else out of me today, Remember, the three keys to success in everything that you do, but especially in video, are one, show up, two, deliver, and then three, engage. And it has to be in that order because you can control the first two. You can't control if people are going to engage or not with your content. But when they do, you better believe you need to show back up and engage with them. Just know that your video content is going to lead to conversations, which are going to lead to conversions. That doesn't mean it's always going to lead to a sale. It may. Ideally, that's what we like, right? Because we're business owners. But it's all about that conversation. Because the conversation leads to that conversion, which can then lead us to an opportunity that helps us grow our business. And that's what we have to be reminded of. So that's what I have for you today. And if you want to, if you're on your computer, you can have fun and scan this with your camera. These are what we call QR codes. I always like to throw in a little bit of fun tech. Uh, but if not, you can always connect with me on my website and on social. And if you go to the website, make sure to use the interactive uh, video that's in the lower right-hand corner, which I'll show you in a second, um, because we're going to look at that blog post before I wrap it up here. So over here, and that's that little video that I was talking about, you can pretty much find it anywhere. Explore it, have fun with it, send me a chat. What's cool is you have audio, video, or text. Obviously we're talking about video, so hopefully you'll do video, uh, but have fun with it because this can help you get more comfortable being on camera. Uh, so I wanted to point this, this one out that I referenced here, just to talk to you about, this was a live broadcast that I did that I repurposed into a blog post that I not only had as a blog post, but it all started with, if I get all the way down here, a TikTok video. So this agent who is from the hit show Selling Sunset on Netflix, Mary is her name. She posted this video on TikTok, which is just a Q&A for real estate agents. It was a great short little video. That's what sparked my idea for the live conversation that we had, which you saw up there, which then also went to YouTube. And then what I did was I looked in the comments. So for you, somebody that you're following or somebody that you uh, are uh, enjoying their videos and they're relevant to maybe your industry, go look at the comments and see what people are saying. So for example, 
I won't go through all of these. I just point out a couple here. But for example, I went through 155 or 150 of her comments. And these are questions people asked, which she could create a video for each one of these, or you could create a video for each one of these. So an example is best marketing strategies to get new clients on LinkedIn. Rejoice, right? Uh, who was your uh, guide when you were new? That's more of an about question, which can be really cool to have on your about page. Um, I'm in my late 30s. Am I too old to get started? Oh my gosh, how great is that question? Because you can replace 30 with 40 or 50 or 60 and talk about whatever your industry is. And I'll put that right now. If you're in your 40s, 50s, or 60s or higher, is it too late for you to start with video? Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. So this is what I'm talking about is you can find content ideas everywhere, especially now that we've opened up that door. And again, you just want one and it's going to go towards your goals and you're going to record and you're going to share and then you're going to repeat. And we're just building these habits. It's one step at a time on this video journey. And then pretty soon you'll be super comfortable with being on video and you'll be super comfortable with sharing video content, not only on social, but on your website, in your emails, in your text messages and anywhere else you show up. That's what I got for you. Thank you so much. Ed, that's just awesome. Yeah. So helpful and so easy to follow. Inspired me. Uh, any, we have time for a couple. Actually, what, what I want to do is turn off the recording, but the meeting will keep going. Here, let me see recording. Um, hang on. Stop the recording. Yes. Okay.